This is High School Football on iTalk 1067, presented by Sholo Ford. High School Football is also brought to you in part by Northland Pioneer College, Ace Hardware of the White Mountains, Little Bluebird Studios, Sunrise Park Resort, Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store, Deemer's Glass, Beeler Orthodontics, Summit Regional Medical Center, Octopus Car Wash, Hudson's Furniture, and Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. And now, Sholo Ford presents High School Football. Well, we welcome you for, uh, to Blue Ridge High School, Camden Smith, Mike Side with Steve Owens, and the Yellow Jackets hosting tonight the four and five Payson Longhorns who come into the contest, the number 20 ranked team in the state. The uh, Yellow Jackets are ranked 11 and looking for a win here tonight. The interesting thing about tonight's contest, Steve, is that this game could have implications for a, a region championship. As you look at the uh, schedules of Snowflake and Blue Ridge, the uh, interesting thing is, is that Blue Ridge could be in the running for a region championship here tonight. They've got to get a win, and Snowflake has to lose their game. That's right. Winslow's got to show up tonight, uh, probably play the best game of their season in order to beat the Snowflake Lobos, but that would set Blue Ridge up to go into a, a championship for the region. So you look at, at the uh, what's going on as far as standing, Snowflake. Sir, you want the football? Yes, sir. Okay, which way would you like to kick it, sir? Okay, put your backs on this line. Payson, come with me. Okay, Payson will receive the ball. Shake hands again. Come out, gentlemen. Play hard. All right, there's your coin toss. We're set for football here at Blue Ridge High School. And uh, we lost our graphics, so we'll just tell you, uh, as far as the injury report is concerned, here tonight we... Uh, uh, look at the pace and Longhorns, and they're missing their second leading rusher, Steve. That's right, with uh, Kyle Shepard. Kyle Shepard's out tonight, uh, apparently an eligible uh, player, but he is a, uh, a magnificent player on their team that they'll be losing. He, he's rushed for 444, made his name on both sides of the, ball, of the ball. This is a bad time to get out of the game. Yeah, 95 carries, 40, uh, 444 yards, three touchdowns and three sacks. He's not injured, but he is inel ineligible, and so uh, we'll see how the pace and Longhorns handle things with him. As we go now to our Ace Hardware keys of the game, brought to you by the Ace Hardware of the White Mountains. Now the 24-7 locksmith. Next time you're locked out of your car, just need a key made. Their mobile unit will come to you. That's the Ace Hardware and Pine Top Sholo and Heber Overgaard. And obviously, as we take a look at uh, the Yellow Jackets, the, it's the guys that we talk about or have been talking about throughout the season. And uh, we'll actually pause for a moment and as we will honor in a moment of silence and we'll find out who here in a second. Thank you. So that is that defense, Dave, that, that I they're honoring? So defense, Dave. So we'll, so uh, yeah. I think that's defense day that they're that they're honoring here tonight. A fixture here at Blue Ridge High School Athletics, Blue Ridge High School Games. Uh, so we start with tonight P.J. London, the quarterback for the Yellow Jackets, a sophomore, 6195 pounder. Uh, he is uh, completing 63% of his passes. He's got eight touchdowns and only six interceptions. 73 of 116 for over a thousand yards passing and uh, has also rushed the football 30 times for 478 yards and four touchdowns. Um, excuse me, that's not correct. I lied. Uh, we go now to Chase Esparza. The, uh, he is sixth in the conference in rushing. He's got 1,152 yards and 10 touchdowns on 195 carries. The 5'8", 155-pound senior is the workhorse for the Yellow Jackets. And then we go to Corey Infield. It's P.J. London's favorite target. Corey, uh, as a senior receiver, has uh, caught four touchdown passes, 478 yards on 30 receptions, and uh, is the primary target, as we mentioned. Next, we go to David Hernandez. Two, uh, two sacks on the season. Leads the team in tackles with 10.3 tackles per game. 
And Tanner McCullough also leading the team in tackles with 10.3 tackles per game. Hernandez playing one fewer games than McCullough. McCullough actually has more tackles, but uh, both averaging the same amount per game, 10.3 tackles per game. We go now to the pace and Longhorns as we look at uh, the Longhorn, the mighty Longhorn offense. It is generaled by Trevor Klein, another sophomore quarterback on the other side of the ball. 76 of 157, over 1,000 yards passing this season. Nine touchdowns, but he has thrown 12 interceptions, uh, only a 48% completion ratio. And Jesse Co uh, Conway the, uh, is the leading rusher, the leading receiver, the leading return man, the leading punt returner. He uh, leads the team in all-purpose yards and leads the team in touchdowns. And he's the other guy that we'll talk about a little bit. And he is set to receive this Northland Pioneer College kickoff. P.J. London kicks. Conway returns at the 13, out to the 15. To the 20, now to the 25. To the 30 on the left side. He goes uh, out of bounds near the 39-yard line. They'll mark him back. It looks like the 38. Good run back. Great blocking by the Pace and Longhorns on that return. And, and Blue Ridge coming out a little bit slow on that kickoff, not responding quickly to that but uh, we'll see what team comes out to play tonight. Go back to our Ace Hardware key players of the game and talk about Jesse Conway, uh, 44 rushes. He's actually listed as a wide receiver, uh, has caught 32 passes for 512 yards and five touchdowns. He's got five rushing touchdowns and five uh, receiving touchdowns and a kickoff return for a touchdown, 11 touchdowns on the season. He is fifth in the state in all purpose yards. That's for all conferences, 1,651. Handed off straight ahead. And the give is to Benitez, and he's got about five yards. Make it six to the 40. Some good blocking by the Longhorn line on that. He got cleared to the secondary before P.J. London was able to bring him down. <coughs> Well, we had high hopes for everything working here tonight, but unfortunately it's not. Our graphics uh, computers decided not to work. The give is to Conway. He tries to get around the edge. He's not going to get there. He'll be dropped for a loss all the way back at the 33-yard line. Call it the 34, Corey Enfield on the tackle for Blue Ridge. Makes a loss of seven yards. You'll see here tries to tries to escape that defense, but Corey Enfield is... Not giving him any room. Chase Esparza just pounces on him to make that tackle. Chase, a player that pays dividends on both sides of the ball for the Yellow Jackets. Couple receivers out wide to the left, single receiver to the right. Klein takes the shotgun snap and rolls to his left, throws, and it's caught by Conway for a first down and more. Out at the third, oh, he is gonna be called out of bounds. He had slipped the tackle, infield on the coverage, got away from him, looked like he was gonna score, but they say he stepped out in Blue Ridge territory at the 39. And Trevor Klein throws, that, throws a nice ball. He's got a real quick release. Conway catches it, tries to stiff arm and shakes that off, but uh, not after, not until after he steps out of bounds, but that, that would have very well been a touchdown there. Looks like players slipping around a little bit out there. We get our first Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down. Benitez carries and knocks over infield as he gets to the 28-yard line, a gain of 13. And another Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down for the Payson Longhorns who have the Yellow Jackets on their heels here in this opening quarter. Trevor Klein takes the snap, hands it off. Room for Benitez, Benitez off the tackle on the left side. He's able to get across the 20 yard line, but a penalty marker is thrown all the way back at the 24 yard line Holy in the backfield. So a hold by Devin Gingry from Payson. Let's see if we Holy can see it here. Two white, ten yard penalty, repeat Holy first down. Oh. 
So what would have been another first down for the Longhorns bring, brings them back to first and 15. 17. Ball at the 33-yard line of the Jackets. We'll call it the 34. Klein sets a man in motion. Gives to Benitez, and Benitez crashes over the left side of the line and gets to the 30-yard line. Payson's moving the ball really well in this. Was outside of that penalty, they're moving the ball great. That uh, penalty by Payson might be uh, the answer Blue Ridge needs to get a little bit of momentum and stop this progression. But Payson's got some, some athletes. They're showing their moves from Conway to Benitez, Klein, all showing what they've got on this first drive. A lot of skill out there. Line's doing a great job. And we get another penalty. Snap, snap infraction. Payson. Payson going to be whistled for another one and shooting themselves in the foot after getting deep into Yellow Jacket territory just outside the red zone. They now find themselves with a second down and 19 in this opening drive of the contest. Give to Benitez, he gets around the left edge and is across the 30 to about the 29-yard line before he's brought down. Zeke Kise on the tackle. Payson's got some good-sized linemen. Their uh, biggest lineman and most stats on their lineman is Mansoor, number 65. He's had quite a bit of action this this season a lot of it on defense a lot of numbers on defense obviously we don't get numbers on offensive linemen but but uh, obviously a, a power man on their on their offensive line big third down play third and 11 he throws it is caught by Flores inside the 20 excuse me I think it's yeah I think it's at the 16 yard line hard for us to see from where we are seated seated rather in the stands, but good for another Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. First down for the Longhorns. They are moving the ball on this opening drive. And that second effort is what got him the first down, I believe. Klein in the gun. Football at the 15-yard line to give to Benitez, and Benitez is across the 15, and Falls near the 13-yard line. So we're Payson really getting their way on offense this drive, the opening drive of the game. Blue is just going to have to change some things on defense, at least with their intensity. Yeah, you know, uh, the Jackets on paper should win this game fairly easily, but uh, you, know, you overlook this Longhorn team and you're in trouble. Second down and eight. Klein takes the shotgun snap, hands it off right side this time, and the Jackets are there. Well played defense. Uh, Porter Flake running that ball and met right at the line of scrimmage. Dominic Hoffmeyer snipes in and gets him there. Hoffmeyer from his defensive back position gets him down for a loss on the play. Back at the 15-yard line, third down and nine. Another big third down play for the Longhorns. Play action, rolling left is Klein, in trouble. Steps up, Hoffmeyer got to him. Another, I think he was tripped up there actually by Marbello. Anthony Marbello looked like he uh, got, a, uh, got a hand on him and tripped him up. McCullough fell on him to make sure he was down. They're gonna try a field goal here. This is going to be a, see, they'll. From the 32-yard attempt here. 33-yard uh, looks like, yeah? 33? Or yeah. is it 32? Where are they going to make the spot here? If he makes it, either way, it's good. <laughs> Long. It's impressive. 33-yard field goal. Plenty of leg. It's good. It's good. We'll have it 33 yards for the field goal. The Longhorns are on the board first. 5.55 left to play first quarter. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on ITALK 106.7 and worldwide on italk1067.com. 
Want to buy the number one selling truck in America for over 41 years? Want to buy a vehicle with a lifetime engine warranty? Want to get the best deal in the state of Arizona on your new Ford car, truck, van, or SUV? Go to Sholo Ford. Anyone can say they'll give you a great deal, but Guy Hatchet Sholo Ford means it. In fact, he guarantees it. Buy the best from the best. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce. Yeah. All right, I do have you guys connected. Well, we welcome you back to Blue Ridge High School. It's the Pace and Longhorns and the Yellow Jackets. And it's the Pace and Longhorns on the board first with a 33-yard field goal by Flores. That was a great kick. And 3-0 uh, lead with 5.55 left to play in the first quarter. Infill back to receive this one. Mansoor is going to kick this one away for the Longhorns. The Northland Pioneer College kickoff is returned out to the 15 to the 20. And across the 20 yard line go, goes uh, Infill, but Henny's going to knock him down at the 34 yard, uh, excuse me, the, what is it? The 24. 24 yard line. There we go. Actually, at the 25. Cody Infield never caught up to his blockers. When he was getting tackled, about 10 of the Longhorns were on him, and the rest of the Yellow Jackets were about 20 yards ahead. So uh, he just never caught up to that crowd of uh, Yellow Jackets for that block. Yellow Jackets used to run a little bit different look on punt returns and kickoff returns, but gone to more traditional methods due to the Recent rules in, in high school football. Esparza gets the first carry for the Yellow Jackets and is out across the 25, has about two or three. Gentry on the tackle for the Longhorns. London, sophomore quarterback for the Yellow Jackets in the gun. Quick throw right side, and it's incomplete, intended for Kise. Kise just turned up field a little too fast. Yeah, you got to watch that ball in and bring that in. That's a five easy five-yard gain if he's hit right when he catches it. So that's that's got to be a catch every time. Just concentration. You got the jitters out now. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> London's been showing improvement all year long. The receiver's got to got to keep up with them. Third down and seven. Ball at the Yellow Jacket 27-yard line. Give to Esparza. Esparza tries to hurdle a, one of his own players who is down on the ground. Mansoor is going to make the tackle. The uh, top tackler for the Payson Longhorns knocks him down at the 30-yard line. End of a few. Brings up fourth down at five. So P.J. London will stand back at his 15-yard line. And Conway and Jojo Ortiz are back to return this one. Conway, the deep man. Nice high punt. Got a tail down spiral. It'll take a jacket bounce after bouncing at the 35-yard uh, line. McCullough will pick it up at the 26. So great punt, you know, punting to a, a guy like Conway. I don't know if they want him to return that. Luckily, it went over his head. They had good pursuit on it, so that'll that'll set them back to their 26-yard line to, for Longhorns to start. Give them a field to work with, and and uh, see if the Blue Ridge defense can show up this this series. Yeah, Jackets uh, punt team successful in flipping the field, so the Longhorns will struggle. From their 26, give the handoff. No, that's a fumble. Take it, pitch it, and a ball loose. I don't think the pitch back knew that it was going to come to him. That was Flake that uh, was the pitch man. It hit him in the face. Fortunately for the Longhorns, he fell right on top of it. He was able to scoop it under himself and save that possession. Yeah, Flake never even saw it coming. I think Flake was faked out. I think he thought the ball was given on the option up the middle. So a loss of five on the play. Ball back at the 21-yard line. Second and 15. 
They go option left again, and this time it's Christensen, the pitch man, and he's got a couple. Apparently they saw that that pitch was open the last play, thought they'd try again. Infield comes in for that tackle to only give him a gain of about one yard. Some pretty good games going on tonight. Uh, yeah, I'll just say Falcons are playing in a region championship game against Red Mesa. That's right, Red Mesa is undefeated, 9-0, I believe. Falcons with only a single loss on the season. Klein going to keep it coming around the right side. McCullough into the backfield. McCullough makes a really good move to, to keep, make him turn up field early. Shakes off the defender, and he's able to tackle him for really no gain on that run. Sets up another punt coming from the Payson Longhorns this time. Conway to punt this one away will stand at his 12. That was and close. That one oh. close to being blocked. McCullough back to return this. It bounced at the 40, took a pace and Longhorn uh, bounce and rolled all the way inside the 30, picked up near the uh, 28. But we're going to have a penalty called against the Yellow Jackets here on the punt. This one may be a first down for the Longhorns. If it's roughing the punter, It's, uh, let's see what. Let's see the call First now. Foul, roughing the kicker, number 80, Blue Ridge. First down, Payson. It just, it's automatic, right? it's so we'll see if we can see on the replay. It's a lot different in high school what roughing the roughing the kicker is. Yeah, there was not much he, contact. He there. got bumped. He ran into him, but didn't even make him take a step back. So it's it's a different call in high school than uh, than you see on TV. <laughs> Mount Mobile Autoglass first down, the easy way here for the Longhorns. Klein sets two receivers right, one to the left, and hands it to Benitez straight ahead. Benitez across the 40. He'll be knocked down near the 43-yard line of Payson by David Hernandez. I'll tell you what, Benitez is showing up for uh, number 25, Kyle Shepard being out of the game. Benitez is stepping up, showing some really good moves and, and not having any problems getting these four and five yard gains, gains almost every time he runs the ball. Well, what you like about him is he's just a great north and south runner. He run, runs it straight up. That's right. Puts his shoulder down and gets yardage. It's that old school smash mouth football. Oh, uh, we get uh -oh. movement. Prior to snap, encroachment, Blue Ridge. Chuck Copeland, our head official here tonight. Haven't had him on camera yet, but uh, his officiating crew doing the honors here tonight. So Yellow Jackets really struggling with execution as they have had two penalties now, second down and one for the Longhorns. Klein on play action, rolling left, throws. It is caught by Conway by one hand. Is it and complete? And him out of bounds, it looks like. Or, no, he's out of bounds, incomplete. What a spectacular was, grab by Conway. That was fancy, though. <laughs> Man, this would have been in the running for our Beeler Orthodontic straight line play of the game for sure. So we see Conway there on the far sideline. Not sure yeah. he had to. Yeah, not he sure. was. Not, he was, in, he was in the air when he grabbed it one-handed. Probably could have stretched and kept those feet in bounds. Third and one, Klein gonna carry himself. Has a first down across the 30. Still churning his feet. Esparza finally knocks him down along with Kise at the 47 yard line. And another Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down for the Payson Longhorns. Well, we owe you some Ace Hardware key players of the game. We'll try to get to those here in a little while. So we coordinate things with our uh, crew in the truck. Couple receivers wide to the right. And hand to Benitez straight ahead. Benitez 
Gets a good head of steam, and Esparza finally drops him, but now before he gets into the defensive secondary of the Yellow Jackets, it close to another Mountain Mobile out of us first down. This time a penalty called on the Longhorns. Holding 53 white, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. So after a great gain <laughs> by the Longhorns brings back 10 yards. They are not having trouble running the ball though tonight so far with this first quarter almost over. Yeah, they have had the football almost the entire first quarter. This uh, their third possession. No, I guess this is would be their their second possession. They Jackets had them stop, but then rough the punter. Klein trying to keep and go around the right side. Esparza grabs his ankle and drops him down for a loss. It'll go down as a sack for Esparza. Great job by Esparza on that to just hang on. He didn't have him well, but just held on long enough to make him want to drop before someone else gang tackled him. Absolutely. So second down and 21, ball at the Payson Longhorn 42, back in Longhorn territory after the holding call and the loss on first down. This is gonna, I don't think they're gonna get the playoff before the quarter expires. They do not. And so at the end of one, the Yellow Jackets trailing three nothing. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on ITalk 106.7 and worldwide on ITalk 1067.com. Orthodontist Dr. Joshua Beeler has been providing family-friendly orthodontics in Sholo and the entire White Mountains since 2006. If you need braces, stop in and see the friendly folks at Beeler Orthodontics and meet their professional staff. Dr. Beeler and his team have the latest in orthodontics technology, and they work with each patient individually to custom tailor the most effective treatment plan for the best results. Beeler Orthodontics is a proud sponsor of high school sports. Beeler Orthodontics, live to smile, love your smile. Well, we welcome you back to Blue Ridge High School where the Yellow Jackets trailing three to nothing. I'm not sure why we have four to nothing up there, but let's go to our Ace Hardware key players of the game, brought to you by the Ace Hardware of the White Mountains. We had talked about uh, Jesse Conway. And uh, we take a look at uh, Jesse Conway here. Actually, I guess we're gonna start with Trevor Klein, the quarterback for the Pace and Longhorns. 76 of 157 for over a third, uh, over a thousand yards passing. Uh, he did has thrown the 12 interceptions. That's probably the one downside for Klein. Uh, we'll go now to Jesse Conway. Conway, a 6'155 pound junior, who's pretty much the end all and be all. We'll now go back to live action. We'll get back to him in a second. Throw near side to Conway. He had one foot down. Another great pass and a, for 16-yard gain by a great catch Tim by Tim McCarthy, I think. Oh, yeah, Tim McCarthy, number 88. <laughs> yeah, McCarthy actually on the reception. I misspoke. A 6'1", 160-pound senior. I had Conway on the mind. I, I thought that uh, maybe he was going to answer the bell after we called him one of our Ace Hardware key players of the game. And uh, Chris will hold off on, on those until for a little bit until we get another break. We'll do it in the next, uh, next timeout. We go right side. Conway going to take a direct snap and go around the right end. Esparza on the tackle as the pace and Longhorns are dropped. Uh, Conway is dropped at the 41-yard line. McCullough also in on the stop. Good looking shot there of Conway. On fourth down, they show punt here. Conway back to punt back at the 50 yard line, takes the snap and he Fake. fakes it, comes to the left side, nice stiff on the player, but won't get around the next side or the next player. And he is brought down shy of the 40-yard line, and that's where the Jackets will take over on downs. And I missed who made the tackle. We'll see if we can see it on the on the uh, replay. Getting word that it's Cameron Ortega that gets him. 
So Hernandez gets stiff-armed. Great stiff arm by Conway. You can see why he's the team's leading rusher. And got almost a late hit there by McCullough. Fortunately, he doesn't draw a flag. First down and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. P.J. London under center takes and hands to Hoffmeyer. Hoffmeyer has some room, bowls over a player, and will get across the midfield stripe into Longhorn territory at the 49. He knocked Conway over and will get close to a first down here. Yeah, luck, luckily for the Longhorns, Conway had a grip when he got ran over, but that was a hard hit. <laughs> Great run by Hoffmeyer on that one. So second down and inches. London taking the snap and handing to Kise. Kise with a first down. Crosses the 45 yard line. Knocked down near the 43 by Flores. And a Mountain Mobile out of glass first down for the Yellow Jackets. Great job by Blue Ridge switching it up. Not going with the same players all the time. is a great, a great player. I haven't seen him run a lot this year, though. That's a, a good little counter play to, to bring it across the line when hopefully to catch the, the pace and defense off guard. Did enough to get the first down on that one. Set a man in motion back behind the formation. London rolling, but it's in trouble. He gets away from the rush, though. Throws deep downfield and is caught. McCullough on the reception inside the 20-yard line. Pace and defender goes up to, to knock that down and just misses it by inches. Not a, not a single lineman got blocked on that one, it looks like. That was a great athletic move by P.J. London. Great catch by Tanner McCullough who had to come back for it. But London just to get away from the rush. That's good for a Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down. There's a snap. Give to Esparza. Esparza powers his way across the 10 yard line. Flores on the tackle, but Esparza gets inside the five. Jackets smelling pay dirt right now. Jackets need to. to make this happen to get in the end zone on this one. They're working fast. Quick snap. Hand to Esparza, second man through on the left side. He's down to the one yard line. They're in that score formation. They're probably gonna rush up and do that one more time. Jackets trailing in this one, three to nothing, but. Oh, that was good enough for a first down. So a Mountain Mobile Auto Glass first down for the Yellow Jackets at the one yard line. And London gonna submarine under for the score. PJ London with a Hudson's Furniture touchdown. The Yellow Jackets take the lead. Well, we'll go back to that 30-yard pass reception. It had to be more than 30 yards because it was inside the 20. It was uh, down at about the 12-yard line. And so we'll have to I, – I think that was more than 30 yards, right? Because he was – ball was at the 40 – well, we'll have to figure it out for you. But anyway, that, that we're going to cue that uh, replay up because we want to see that one again. Good point after try. And the, uh, there's your touchdown, but uh, we want to see the pass. We'll, we'll look at that in a moment. But we, uh, okay, so here's the pass. From the 44-yard line? Yeah, so they're at the, oh, they're at the Payson 44-yard line. And P.J. London. He just threw it from the 50. <laughs> just chucks this one. And it's caught at the 11. So it's a 33-yard pass, is that right? Let me get my calculator watch out. We'll do some <laughs> That's. I thought that's why yards. you brought Angie. Because <laughs> you got three guys here who can't do the math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my I'm, shoes off. and Time for our Northland Pioneer College kickoff. Brought to you by Northland Pioneer College. Don't forget the lowest tuition in the state of Arizona is at Northland Pioneer College. London's kick. End over ender, bounces 
At about the 23 Lurich yard line, Conway little. picks it up, slips and falls. And, uh, and a flag on the play. As far comes in and may have hit him late. Personal foul, late hit, Blue Ridge. The 15 yard penalty, first down. Second personal foul by Blue Ridge, and that's a very poor timing. They had a nice kickoff there that Payson fumbled around and wasn't able to return. Set them way back in their, in their territory. This brings it all the way out to the 20, 28 yard line, 27 yard line for Payson to start this drive. Finds in shotgun. Seven to three is our score here. They hand to Benitez. Benitez spinning his way. And PJ London finally brings him down, but not before he gets across the 30. He'll be just shy of the 35 yard line by about an inch. He picks up eight, call it seven yards on first down. Pace and Longhorns do a great job. Their line opening up that hole. Could have driven a truck through it. You can see three guys in the backfield from our angle through the hole he ran through. So. Number 57, Will Howell on that side of the line did a great job. Second down and three from the 34, hand to Flake. Flake has a first down. Knocks down a defensive back, that's Enfield, who he bowls over after he gets out across the 45 yard line and will be just shy of midfield. About 14 yards on the carry, good for a Mount Mobile Autoglass first down here for the Longhorns. Shotgun snap, hand to Benitez, hit at the line of scrimmage by Hernandez. He spins, has a couple of yards across the midfield stripe. And into Yellow Jacket territory at the 49. They'll mark him down right at the 49 yard line. See Klein getting the signals from the sideline and checking his plays on his wristband on second down and nine from the 49 yard line. Looks right, throws, it is caught by Flores for a first down across the 40. And Infield makes the tackle at the 39. But another Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down for the Longhorns, and they continue to move the ball at will almost here tonight. They had a great offensive uh, look here tonight that the Yellow Jackets haven't figured out. No, the defensive line has not been able to, uh, to stop that run. And, and the defensive backs aren't really covering the receivers very close, giving them a lot of cushion. Snap to Klein, give to Benitez, left side. Benitez gonna be hit by infield who closes quickly and drops him after a gain of a couple. Great, great looking defensive play by Corey Infield. We talked about his abilities as a wide receiver, but he's also done a terrific job at the uh, free safety position this season for the Yellow Jackets. And Blue Ridge needs to see more of that closing speed the rest of the game if they're going to stop this pace in offense. They've got to be quick to react to that ball and not let them get to the second level. Second down and seven. Shotgun snap, Klein rolls to his right, throws, and it's incomplete intended for the... McCarthy. McCarthy, yeah, Tim McCarthy. Connected with McCarthy earlier, but this time unsuccessful. So a third down and seven coming up at the 37-yard line. The scoreboard says third and six, but that's a long six. Good-looking shot of Klein here, the sophomore quarterback for the mighty Longhorns. Taking that shotgun snap, looking to his left, throws, and it's incomplete intended for McCarthy. Ortega on the coverage for the Yellow Jackets. I thought he was going to hang on to that one. Unfortunately for the Longhorns, he drops it. Yeah, it looked like it might have been thrown a little bit short. He had to get low for it, and Ortega had good closing speed to, to defend that. Met him right as the ball got there. 
So some good defense and, and uh, luckily a little bit short pass by Payson. So on fourth down, the last time we saw this in jacket territory, Conway faked it. This time he punts it from the 45, a line drive punt will be picked up by Key, excuse me, by infield. And infield is going to be dropped at the seven yard line as he tried to get through some traffic. Luis Diaz knocks him down for the Yellow Jackets. He could have let that go into the end, into the end zone for a touchback, and it would have been an 80-yard field. But as it is, the Jackets will have to fight from out of the shadow of their own goalpost on their end of the field. That's right, and the way they've been moving the ball, they're gonna, they could really struggle. This could be a bad situation for them. They've got to play really smart here. Ball on the eight, first and 10, Jackets. Payson's just licking their chops. On a quick snap. Hands right side to Esparza. Esparza gets across the 12, out to the 13-yard line, picks up three on first down. Make it four on first down. So to bring up second down and six. And to Esparza again. This time Esparza... Drop for after a gain of about one by Mansoor. Longhorn leading tackler. He's a big target to have to go around, 280 pounds. Six, six foot four? Yeah, six four. Senior, 280 pounds. Single back flanking London to his right is Esparza, and P.J. London keeps around the right side, has a first down across the 20, knocked down by Trevor Klein, and it's good for a Mountain Mobile Auto Glass first down. Pretty big hit there. I think that was Esparza on that hit. Yeah, you could hear some popping going on, and P.J. Yeah, London's not afraid to, to take some hits either. He's Esparza out in front, and he goes head hunting right there. Hits Porter Flake. Pretty good collision and enough for a first down, Jackets. Not many of those here tonight so far. Snap in hand to Esparza. Esparza fighting his way across the 30-yard line. He'll be knocked down at the 32. Devin Glavin on the tackle for Pace and along with Christensen. Picks up. Nine yards on first down. It'll be second down and one. With 440 left in this, 430 left in this second quarter. Blue Ridge showing some signs of, of life here, making this, putting this drive together. Doing some good blocking, some great running. Let's see if PJ can pass the ball out to McCullough and gets hit hard right at the line of scrimmage, but he's still up. Oh, he stays on his feet and on wow. second effort gets the Mountain Mobile on glass first down. Got hit by Flores right at the line of scrimmage, right when he turned around. You'll see it on this replay. Great defense by Flores, but McCullough just keeps his feet pumping. His, yeah, oh, his knee did not touch. Did yeah, he not kept touch. going. It Long, was close. <laughs> Longhorn defense stopped on the play. That's one of the problems with the early whistles on late hits is uh, it kind of, you know, if you're a defender, it's kind of hard on that situation. Do you come in and make a hit there, or do you – Lay off, they laid off and paid the price. It's a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Pump fake. Wide open infield. infield wide open, and he's going to go right side. Only one man to catch him, and he's in for the score. 65 yards, Corey Infield. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. A Hudson's Furniture touchdown. Well, as the Jackets get set for the point after try, we'll go downstairs and check in with Ron Everingham. Ron? Yeah, I came down here on the pace and sidelines. Uh, Luis Diaz is uh, going under the concussion protocol, looks like, and just asking him the standard questions about where they played last week and things like that. I think he's going to be all right, be, be back in the game here in a bit. All right, thanks, Ron. As 
London tacks on the point after, and the Yellow Jackets lead it here 14-3. We step away. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk 106.7 and worldwide on italk1067.com. Hudson's Furniture has quality furniture at affordable prices. With their newly expanded showroom, they offer furniture for every room in your home, including best home furnishings, featuring solid wood construction and a lifetime warranty. And customized orders are available to fit your individual size, color, and style. Plus, get guaranteed credit approval with zero interest and zero down. For the best prices on quality furniture, visit Hudson's Furniture across from Walmart in Taylor. Well, P.J. London puts uh, the Yellow Jackets up by a couple of touchdowns. Two big passes by London. A 33-yard reception in the first score uh, to McCullough. The second one, a 65-yard pass to Corey Enfield. Some two great long passes. Could have been a little, be little bit deeper, but Cody didn't have anybody around him by 10 yards, so. High end over in. Kick, filled it by Conway near the 20 yard line. Goes right side, out to the 40. Still on his feet as he crosses the 45 yard line, but they, stay, they say he stepped out There's at the off. 40. Picked up by Jenny and so, uh, excellent field position for the Longhorns after the Northland Pioneer College kickoff. Conway brings it up to about. Conway's very patient on that, on that kickoff return. You see him, he's just kind of jogging behind his blockers, waiting for them to get set up. Once it's set up, you see a speed turn on and and uh, he has good acceleration, but uh, that was towards the sideline, so he was bumped out of bounds pretty quick on that. But he sees the field well, impressed with Conway a lot tonight. Give it to Christensen. Christian slips out of a tackle. Enfield finally brings him down at the 45 yard line, call it the 46, but not before he picks up about six yards five or six yards it's going to be second down and four shotgun snap decline play action rolls to his right and slips out of a tackle uh, but dives forward gets wrapped up by Hoffmeyer and uh, will bring up third down and one. He picks up about three. Two minutes, 40 seconds left in this half and the pace of Longhorns trailing by a couple of touchdowns, down 14 to three. Line with a single back in the backfield. That's Christensen, they give to him, and Christensen, the freshman, getting a Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down. Enfield spins him down at the Yellow Jacket 45. Great run by that freshman. <laughs> With 2.20 left, Payson working hard to get on the board again before this halftime shows up. Klein snaps it, fakes it, rolls out to his left. Did he have it? Yeah, That's McCarthy. what I was thinking. Oh, no, incomplete. He spun around and that ball bobbled. Maybe we have a replay on that to see what happened. I was wondering how this was going to play out when I saw him spin around. Looked like he made a solid catch there, but it was. Oh, yeah. You can't see it from. <laughs> yeah, that angle's the not the best. The but you can see it coming out right there. He never had control of it. So, second down and 10 from the 45 of the Yellow Jackets. Longhorns trailing 14 3. Give to Christensen, and Christian, Christensen gain of a couple. Give him one, Muncie on the tackle. Third down and nine. Minute 
45 left to play here before halftime. Shotgun snap, line rolling right, throws, and it is caught. No, incomplete at the 40-yard line. Flores, the intended receiver, but it's skipped. He's got through his hand, so again, this is a territory where the Longhorns okay to run the fake. Conway back to punt, stands at the pace of Longhorn 46. Infield back to return this one for the Yellow Jackets. It's a well knuckleballer that goes out of bounds at the He's still official. Walking. Still walking. In no hurry to get there. <laughs> <laughs> at the 21. 22-yard <laughs> line. So not what Conway had hoped. I think he wanted to get that one inside the 20, trying to angle that one out, but angled it out a little too early. Obviously trying to kick it away from Corey Enfield. So if Blue Ridge up 14 to three, do you think they go to a, a quick offense, try and get on the board one more time? How hard do they push this down the field? 79 yards. Well, if they can go up another touchdown, that really gives them momentum heading into that third quarter. So a couple receivers to the left and London in the gun. They set Kisei in motion, they hand to him. He's gonna sweep to the left side. Way out. Cuts it up, has some room to the 30. Out to the third, uh, 45 where Klein will force him out of bounds. They will mark him out right at the 35-yard line. It'll be a 15-yard first down for the Yellow Jackets. So great gain by the Yellow Jackets. Also gets out of bounds, stop the clock. Only running yeah, seven seconds off. Coming up at half here. The yellow so he goes out of bounds. He stops the clock with a minute 23. Trip set to the right side and a single receiver to the left. London looking to throw. Moves Cody to his infield. right, throws deep right side. Infield is open, but he can't hit him. Corey Enfield was angling towards the post that time, and it hey, looked like London nice was leading him to the outside away from the defender, and it looked like uh, Enfield kind of faded towards the middle of the field that time, and it may have thrown it off just a little bit. You know, and I think watching, I was watching Cody Enfield run down that entire pattern, and he slowed down. Yeah, almost like he running thought. that pattern because he had his arm up in the air saying, throw it to me, I'm open. He almost thought, uh, almost like he thought P.J. couldn't hit him that far. London throws right side to Kise. Kise makes the catch and goes out of bounds in Longhorn territory at the 30, uh, call it the 43-yard line. Another Mountain Mobile out of glass, first down for the Jackets. And the clock stopped with a minute 10 left to play in the second half. 23 yards on the reception. Okay, so if Kise gets the next first down, we'll just call this the Kise drive. There you go. <laughs> hey, that's a pretty good catch right there. That one in the running for our Belo Orthodontic straight line play of the game. P.J. London takes the shotgun snap. With a fresh set of downs, no one to go to, so he's going to take it and then sprints out of bounds with a minute four left to play. Jackets doing a good job of controlling the clock here. That's right. I mean, he got, what, six, seven yards on that gain and uh, was smart enough not to be a hero and try and go for the touchdown. There's a lot of defenders in front of him. Head for the, out, head for the sidelines and stop the clock. They're, they're playing well right now. Second down and four, he gets six on first down. And the Jackets still with their timeouts here, so in good shape. Wow. Oh, quick, oh, quick little throw to Kise <laughs> and almost like a little res uh, receiver screen out to the left side on that trips that were in a bunch set. But Kise can't hang on to it. Sparsely populated crowd here tonight. Weather turning away, I'm sure a lot of fans here tonight. It, and it's a little bit chilly. Our student section on the Blue Ridge side is a, is pretty quiet tonight. Yeah, sitting on their hands to keep them warm. Trips to the left, single receiver to the right. London rolling to his left on third down and four. Quick throw left side for Kise. He drops it at the 20-yard line. Would have been good for a first down, but a hold, or excuse me, a flag is in the backfield. 75 Blue Ridge holds. So holding on Kevin Trujillo. 75. 
Held number 57, Will Howell, on that. Pretty much tackled him, brought him to the ground. Holding 75, Blue Ridge. And you can see there he pulls him down. And the official right on top of it makes the call. Well, Kise gets away with that one after dropping it. He, you know, that's yeah. two, two passes in a row that he's dropped that have hit him right in the hands. He's got to be able to pull those in if the Jackets are going to get on the board again this half. Yeah, if there's a bright side to it from Kise's perspective, <laughs> that whole call means he doesn't get penalized for the drop pass. He was looking back. I think he was looking back for the pass and saw the pink flag, and it distracted him. Is that what it I was? I think it got in his eyes. The okay. Player. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that must be it. I don't know. Four receivers, two left, two right, tied in on the right side. And London looking to throw. Whoa! Throws Whoa! right side towards McCullough. McCullough oh my catches goodness. it and steps out of bounds. A Mountain Mobile out of glass first down. Wow. <laughs> oh, another flag. But a penalty marker back in the backfield. Oh, that was a gorgeous catch. Battling for it. Can't no a block cushion whatsoever. Global waste, number 62, Blue Ridge. The quarterback was in the shotgun. You cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love it. Chuck Copeland. Great explanation. Always matter of fact. We know. Got a block global waste, Blue Ridge. 15 yard penalty. Oh, wow. Ridge, so that negates, not only does it negate the first down and the the Bilo Orthodontic straight line play of the game by McCullough, but it uh, erases an opportunity here because with 47 seconds left, that that was uh, near the 20 yard line, so it put it would have put the Yellow Jackets in the red zone again with 47 seconds left. Now they got some work to do on third down and 32 from the 35, their own 35. Give to Asparza, he goes right side this time. It looks like the Jackets have maybe resigned themselves to trying to just run the clock out here. Run the clock, get a punt downfield, give them a long field to, to deal with with just a few seconds left. And skate away with a 14 Surprisingly, Payson not calling a timeout here. And Jackets shouldn't even have to punt. That's going to end the half. I'm surprised Payson didn't call a timeout. There was. They would have got the ball back with over 30 seconds left, but they're going to allow it to run down. 14 to 3 will be our halftime score. We'll be back with our Sunrise Park Resort halftime show when we return. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on ITalk 1067 and worldwide on ITalk1067.com. In today's challenging economy, having a college education is a must. Northland Pioneer College is here to help you prepare for your future. NPC is committed to providing you with the highest quality education with the lowest tuition cost in the state. We offer a variety of advanced learning classes to prepare you for a transfer or associate's degree, personal interest education, or earning your GED. Contact an academic advisor for more information. Go online at npc.edu. Well, we welcome you back here as uh, we thought we were going to halftime, but Blue Ridge called the timeout with .9 seconds left on the clock. And I'm not sure why. I guess we're going to find out here. Looks like they're going to punt. Why wouldn't they just run it and waste the clock? Well, Kisei's dropped deep, and now they're going to... Now they run the clock out. That was That's kind, of, kind of strange. I don't know what happened there. We'll see if uh, Ron can find out for us. But that'll be the halftime. Jackets lead 14-3. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on ITalk 106.7 and worldwide on ITalk1067.com.
Need hats, shirts, or jackets embroidered with your logo? Get custom embroidered products from Little Bluebird Studios. That's right, the company that does the best job screen printing t-shirts and hoodies now offers embroidery. Little Bluebird Studios is a local company with skilled designers that care about your company's image and brand. Call Little Bluebird Studios today, 928-351-7942 or online at littlebluebird.org. Little Bluebird Studios, the company that cares. Summit Healthcare Regional Medical Center is a proud supporter of high school sports. Many of our local sports players were born at the hospital, where Summit Obstetrics offers comfortable individual rooms for mom and baby. In case of a sports injury, the hospital ER is always staffed and prepared to take on the most serious injuries, and Summit features an advanced diagnostics department with state-of-the-art equipment. The Summit Healthcare orthopedic and therapy teams can help sports players overcome injuries and return to the game. Summit Healthcare Regional Medical Center wishes all players a successful and healthy season this year. You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there, and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world-famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. Well, we welcome you back to an earthquake here at Blue Ridge High School. 14 to 3 is our halftime score. We welcome you to our Sunrise Park Resort halftime show brought to you by the Sunrise Park Resort. Excellent skiing expected up at Sunrise. They've already had a couple of snowstorms, expecting a lot more moisture this year. Should be an excellent year to uh, to go skiing. Get your skis shined up and uh, head on up there to Sunrise. You want to check things out at sunriseskipark.com. If you uh, uh, do so early enough, you may be able to still get yourself a discounted lift pass up there at Sunrise. Go to sunriseskipark.com for details at sunriseskipark.com. Let's take a look at how this first half unfolded. As we got things started, it was the Pace and Longhorns in their opening drive. They went uh, went, uh, uh, the length of the field, and then they capped the drive off with a 33-yard field goal by Flores to put the pace and Longhorns up 7-3, to three, and that would have been good from about 43 or maybe even 50 yards. Here's uh, P.J. London setting up the second score of the game. London getting away from the rush here, stepping up and throwing on a 33-yard pass reception to Trevor McCullough, or is it Tanner? Tanner. Tanner McCullough, younger brother, Tanner McCullough, from uh, P.J. London. The one-yard touchdown, uh, carry by P.J. London to get the score, and the good PAT made it 7-3. That set up the final score of the half. The Jackets up 7-3 at this point, and then a 93-yard drive is capped off by a 65-yard touchdown pass from London to Corey Enfield. He burns up the near sideline and scores it for the Jackets, a good PAT, and with 347 left in the half, it was 14-3, and that's our halftime score. We'll step away, back with a look inside the numbers with Mike Caldwell. And Angie Caldwell, when we return, this is uh, the Sunrise Park Resort Halftime Show on italk 106.7 and worldwide on italk1067.com. 
Want to buy the number one selling truck in America for over 41 years? Want to buy a vehicle with a lifetime engine warranty? Want to get the best deal in the state of Arizona on your new Ford car, truck, van, or SUV? Go to Sholo Ford. Anyone can say they'll give you a great deal, but Guy Hatchet Sholo Ford means it. In fact, he guarantees it. Buy the best from the best. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce. Orthodontist Dr. Joshua Beeler has been providing family-friendly orthodontics in Sholo and the entire White Mountains since 2006. If you need braces, stop in and see the friendly folks at Beeler Orthodontics and meet their professional staff. Dr. Beeler and his team have the latest in orthodontics technology, and they work with each patient individually to custom-tailor the most effective treatment plan for the best results. Beeler Orthodontics is a proud sponsor of high school sports. Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile. Love your smile. Hudson's Furniture has quality furniture at affordable prices. With their newly expanded showroom, they offer furniture for every room in your home, including best home furnishings, featuring solid wood construction and a lifetime warranty. And customized orders are available to fit your individual size, color, and style. Plus, get guaranteed credit approval with zero interest and zero down. For the best prices on quality furniture, visit Hudson's Furniture, across from Walmart in Taylor. In today's challenging economy, having a college education is a must. Northland Pioneer College is here to help you prepare for your future. NPC is committed to providing you with the highest quality education with the lowest tuition cost in the state. We offer a variety of advanced learning classes to prepare you for a transfer or associate's degree, personal interest education, or earning your GED. Contact an academic advisor for more information. Go online at npc.edu. Need hats, shirts, or jackets embroidered with your logo? Get custom embroidered products from Little Bluebird Studios. That's right, the company that does the best job screen printing t-shirts and hoodies now offers embroidery. Little Bluebird Studios is a local company with skilled designers that care about your company's image and brand. Call Little Bluebird Studios today, 928-351-7942 or online at littlebluebird.org. Little Bluebird Studios, the company that cares. Summit Healthcare Regional Medical Center is a proud supporter of high school sports. Many of our local sports players were born at the hospital, where Summit Obstetrics offers comfortable individual rooms for mom and baby. In case of a sports injury, the hospital ER is always staffed and prepared to take on the most serious injuries, and Summit features an advanced diagnostics department with state-of-the-art equipment. The Summit Healthcare orthopedic and therapy teams can help sports players overcome injuries and return to the game. Summit Healthcare Regional Medical Center wishes all players a successful and healthy season this year. Well, we welcome you back to Blue Ridge High School. It's 14 to three at, at the half. The Longhorns trailing the Yellow Jackets here as we have been uh, entreated by a very well put together and uh, really spectacular band performance here by the Pace and Longhorn Marching Band, complete with costume changes and everything. I mean, this has been uh, quite the quite the performance. And uh, been kind of fun to watch. So uh, hats off to the Pace and Longhorn Marching Band as they've done a terrific job here tonight treating the fans at Blue Ridge High School to some awesome, uh, what do you call it, bandery or awesome uh, pageantry? Pageantry. pageantry. Okay. Awesome pageantry. How's that? <laughs> Sunrise Park Resort Halftime Show. And we go now to our spotter and statistician, 
Mike Caldwell with a look inside the numbers that tells the true story here tonight. Mike, what do you got for us? Oh, thanks, Kevin. Well, it's a pretty well-balanced uh, game by the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets, and Payson's trying to do the same, but just not the same success. We got Blue Ridge, P.J. London is 4-4-7, 4, 4, 7, 424 yards, with one TD going to uh, Corey Infield for 65 yards. But he has had several long passes either dropped or Blue Ridge's penalties have held them back. So a good game for P.J. Um, if we can, the receivers can hold on to some of those passes, his numbers would be a lot more. Uh, leading the way for receiving is Corey Infield with one reception for 65 yards. Tanner McCullough has chipped in two for 37 yards. And Zeke Kise has got a 22-yard reception. So big receptions, yards. Uh, leading the way for the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets is Chase Esparza as usual. Eight carries for 37 yards. Zeke Casey has chipped in two carries for 20 yards. And P.J. Lundell scrambled for 15. The thing that's holding back Blue Ridge is one, the drops, and then some penalties. They've got five penalties for 65 yards. And three of those penalties have been 15-yard personal foul. The Payson Longhorns. Trevor Klein is 4 for 9 for 68 yards. Leading the way on the ground is Benitez with 9 carries for 49 yards. Receiving Conway, 1 reception for 30. Flores, 2 receptions for 22 yards. And so, we have a score of 14-3. We'll see what happens in the second half, Kendall. All right, thanks, Mike. And we'll step away back with more of our Sunrise Park Resort halftime show when we return. This is the Sunrise Park Resort Halftime Show on iTalk 106.7 and worldwide on iTalk1067.com. Want to buy the number one selling truck in America for over 41 years? Want to buy a vehicle with a lifetime engine warranty? Want to get the best deal in the state of Arizona on your new Ford car, truck, van, or SUV? Go to Sholo Ford. Anyone can say they'll give you a great deal, but Guy Hatch at Sholo Ford means it. In fact, he guarantees it. Buy the best from the best. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce. You've been there waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world-famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Well, we welcome you back to Blue Ridge High School. Halftime score 14-3. to We'll go downstairs now to Ron Everingham, and uh, I think he's got a coach mic'd up. Ron, who you got? Yeah, we're down here with Coach Burt. Coach, uh, a, a good first half for your team, down 14-3. to um, you got a real promising backfield with a, a sophomore quarterback and a freshman running back. Why don't you talk just real quick about what you liked out of your team uh, there in the first half and maybe something that you talked to your team going into the second half that you got to do tonight. Uh, you know, uh, our, our offensive line, defensive line come out and are playing physical, and, and uh, it's kind of something that we strive on. And, uh, you know, um, we're moving the ball pretty well. Um, running backs are hitting downhill. And, um, you know, Travis Christensen and, uh, and Vladimir, they're coming downhill pretty hard. Um, we're getting the ball downfield. We're, we're just not capitalizing in the red zone. That's something that we, uh, that we we're continuing to work on. So um, something that we're going to come out in the half. That was a focus. That was what we talked about. And, you know, on the defensive end, uh, where we give up two big plays on, on passes. Other than that, you know, we this is uh, a same Blue Ridge team we're going to see. We've seen on every game film. You know, they're going to give you the same same handful of plays. We just got to keep executing. So um, we're going to keep flying. Hopefully, we can come come downhill. Um, DB stay a little more disciplined and uh, um, we come out and execute. Yeah, uh, South quarterback for the Yellow Jackets, London, um, had a few plays called back there on penalties and it looked like their passing game was picking up a little bit. Anything for you guys to be concerned about with that or are you just going to do what you've been doing? Uh, you know, uh, our, um, our our corners bit on some plays and, you know, and, and um, you know, Blue Ridge makes a living on uh, low on DBs asleep with their you know, power run game and, and taking shots. So they, uh, that's something we talked about and just reading the keys and being disciplined and, um, you know, the, the routes themselves and the reads themselves 
um, aren't too complicated. We're just, you know, our, our kids are just getting their eyes everywhere, and, you know, and that's something we talked about and just uh, got to be a focus. Okay, Coach, good luck second half. We'll talk to you after the game, hopefully. Back up to you guys, Camden. All right, thanks, Ron. Appreciate that, and uh, appreciate a brand-new coach there at Payson High School taking the time to talk to us here. Um, we uh, will take a quick timeout here. I think we'll be back with our second half kickoff when we return. This has been the Sunrise Park Resort Halftime Show. Don't forget a chance for excellent skiing conditions coming up this winter. Still time to get your dis uh, discounted lift pass. Check it out at sunriseskipark.com. That's sunriseskipark.com. We'll be back with the second half when we return. This is uh, the Sunrise Park Resort Halftime Show on iTalk 106.7 and worldwide at italk1067.com. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. Orthodontist Dr. Joshua Beeler has been providing family-friendly orthodontics in Sholo and the entire White Mountains since 2006. If you need braces, stop in and see the friendly folks at Beeler Orthodontics and meet their professional staff. Dr. Beeler and his team have the latest in orthodontics technology, and they work with each patient individually to custom-tailor the most effective treatment plan for the best results. Beeler Orthodontics is a proud sponsor of high school sports. Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile. Love your smile. Hudson's Furniture has quality furniture at affordable prices. With their newly expanded showroom, they offer furniture for every room in your home, including best home furnishings, featuring solid wood construction and a lifetime warranty. And customized orders are available to fit your individual size, color, and style. Plus, get guaranteed credit approval with zero interest and zero down. For the best prices on quality furniture, visit Hudson's Furniture, across from Walmart in Taylor. In today's challenging economy, having a college education is a must. Northland Pioneer College is here to help you prepare for your future. NPC is committed to providing you with the highest quality education with the lowest tuition cost in the state. We offer a variety of advanced learning classes to prepare you for a transfer or associate's degree, personal interest education, or earning your GED. Contact an academic advisor for more information. Go online at npc.edu. Welcome back to Blue Ridge High School. 14 to three is our halftime score as the Yellow Jackets get set for the second half kickoff. And we have a couple of uh, uh, scores for you to pass along. The uh, Snowflake Lobos at Winslow tonight. Up 14 to nothing in that contest. I'm not sure how to read that. Oh yeah, but that, well, we, we can't put it up on that graphic because that would indicate it's a final. So Snowflake up 14 to nothing over Winslow and uh, Red Mesa up 20 to 14 over Alchese in that uh, 2A region championship game. Kickoff, North and Pioneer kickoff return by Corey Enfield at the one. Has a hole, and he's at uh, the 35-yard line. Drug down by Benitez at the 39. Mansoor also in on the tackle. But uh, Kise looked like for a moment he was going to take that one to the house. You mean infield, I know. But, or infield, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> he ran it up right to where the flags were already set. Let's go downstairs and check in with Ron Everingham. Ron? Yeah, talking about uh, Coach London coming out of the locker room, he just said, of course, they want to limit mistakes and um, just keep doing what their game plan is, keep doing what they're doing. But limit some of those mistakes. He wasn't very happy about that, of course. Uh, All right. But, you know. Tough to get a lot out of Coach London. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ron. 14-3 is our score, and an injured player on the field for the Longhorns. 
Haven't seen his number yet, but. Uh, Maybe if we have a replay, we can see what happened to him. There we go. There's your Northland Pioneer College kickoff and. Catches it right at the one. Enfield finds, you mentioned that he couldn't catch up with that um, wedge. They, they corrected last time, that, but he, yeah, he fixed that in a hurry. Is that 26? Yep, 26, Benitez. Well, hopefully he can shake this off and get back in because he's the backup running back for Payson. See he's if we can, up. maybe That's we can sign. cue up the last part of that uh, that replay. See if we can uh, see the last part. Of, we don't want to see the whole thing again, but that part where walking off on his Benitez own gets hit. I think he got hit by his own player. When he tackled him, he kind of did a somersault over the top of in, or yeah, right there. Infield kind of rolled him. Can't really tell what happened to him on that, but. Luckily, he's, he's walking it. off on his own strength. Hopefully, he'll shake it off and get back on the field. We have to slow it down more. So Benitez getting some medical attention on the far sideline there. The Longhorns give up good field position to the Yellow Jackets here. They give to Esparza across the 40-yard line. Has three or four on first down. Flores on the stop that time. It'll bring up second down at six. As they mark the ball near the 43, between the 42 and 43 yard line. London under center. Two men in a bunch set, actually trips in a bunch set on the left side. Now they're going to motion those two men. One of those is Kise, the other one's Hoffmar, set on the right side. And pitch to Esparza. Esparza trying to sweep right, trying to get to the edge. And he's going to be drugged down by Conway. But he'll have close to first down yardage, though. Depends on the spot here. And he'll have it. The Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down at the 49. See why? great blocking. Dominic Hoffmeyer takes the first guy out with Tanner Mansoor coming through to, to uh, try and trip up Chase Esparza on, early on in that run. Couldn't quite reach him. And Esparza just ran out of field there. He got out of that, uh, he got out of that next tackle, was looking for the next guy, but he was stepped, uh, stepped out of bounds. Get to Esparza, Mansoor gonna spin him down at midfield. Gain of two. Nope, gain of one at the midfield mark. Seeing why Mansoor is on the books for so many sacks. How many sacks has he had? I think so he had have six? six sacks. Caused five fumbles this season. Yeah, he's recovered five fumbles as well. Averages 7.4 tackles per game and has 19.5 uh, tackles for loss on the season. Shotgun snap to London. Looks left. Throws. Wide open. Cut by Kise. Kise first down. Lowers his shoulder at the 40-yard line. Conway trips him up. He's at the 38-yard line. Good for a Mountain Mobile out of glass. First down. A 12-yard pitch and catch from London to Kise. You know, I sometimes think when defensive backs go to make that tackle and they dive at the legs of a receiver, <laughs> sometimes you just have to put a little juke move on because they're – they're not making a good tackle. They're just trying to trip you. London looking to throw. Throws near side. Caught by Kise. Kise slips a tackle. He's at the 20, the 15, 10, 5, touchdown. 38 wow. yards. Got out of a tackle and gets the Hudson's furniture touchdown. So Con Conway makes a real lazy attempt on that tackle. If he would have just wrapped up, the play was over. You see him just push him, thinking I'll just push him out of bounds and play is over with, but not quite there. Him, 
pushed him upfield almost there. Kese with the strength to stay in bounds, and he's gone. So if Payson's going to get back in this game, they've got to keep playing and, and play like they did the first quarter. Point after try by London is good. 21 to 3, 950 left to play third. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk 1067 and iTalk1067.com. Need hats, shirts, or jackets embroidered with your logo? Get custom embroidered products from Little Bluebird Studios. That's right, the company that does the best job screen printing t-shirts and hoodies now offers embroidery. Little Bluebird Studios is a local company with skilled designers that care about your company's image and brand. Call Little Bluebird Studios today, 928-351-7942 or online at littlebluebird.org. Little Bluebird Studios, the company that cares. Well, we welcome you back here to Blue Ridge High School where the Yellow Jackets are up 21 to three. The Jackets holding up their end of the bargain here as they get set for the Northam Pioneer College kickoff. The Jackets came into this contest with a chance to win a 3A East Region Championship, but they had needed two things to happen. They needed to win this game and then they needed Snowflake to lose their game against Winslow. Not a likely prospect, but uh, and uh, even less likely now that we know that the Lobos are up by a couple of scores over the Bulldogs at halftime. Conway tries to get out of a tackle, and that was Esparza hanging on to him. We'll see what the penalty marker is. Let's go downstairs and check in with Ron Everingham. Ron? Yeah, down here on the Payson sideline, Benitez, uh, number 26, has got a, a back spasm. We saw him on the field here a little bit ago. He's experiencing some pain, but he is cleared to play when he's ready. All right, thanks, Ron. Understand Diaz is back in the contest as well. So face mask against Payson on that return bring, pushes them back a little bit. Uh, yeah, against pace and pushes them back a little bit further for their possession to start on the five yard line. They hand it right up the middle to Christensen. Hernandez and London combine on the tackle and drop him at the eight yard line. Okay. So a nice looking run on first down to get about three. The Longhorns need to put just they just need consistency, really. I mean, they've, they've had uh, several drives that were promising but haven't been able to capitalize. Like the coach said, it sounded like his tone of voice made it sound like they struggled in the red zone all year. So, so Klein and shotgun, a single back behind him, hands off to Christensen right up the middle again, tackled by a slew of Yellow Jackets. Dimitri Muncy on that tackle. After a gain of about, about five, brings it to third and three for the patient Longhorns. Klein once again in, in shotgun formation, two receivers out to his right, one to the left. And he does a quick pass to number eight, 88 McCarthy. Brought down by Hoffmeyer after a gain of, a, of about 15 yards. Brings the ball out to the 25 yard line for Mount Mobile Auto Glass first down for the Payson Longhorns. Nice catch and we've seen a couple of nice catches by the big wide receiver here tonight for the Payson Longhorns. He's a uh, guy that we didn't talk about as one of our key players of the game but McCarthy's looked pretty sharp tonight. Another handoff to Christensen. He goes out to the left side, shakes off a tackler and then is brought down at about the 31 yard line by, by McCullough. So Payson looking more like they did in the first quarter with these with this drive, opening up some holes, making some good blocks. Payson comes up to the line, one receiver out to the left, two out to the right, two backs in the backfield with Klein in shotgun. Hands it off to Porter Flake, who runs to the right side and is met 
immediately, at, well, after a gain of about a yard. Met by Esparza, McCullough. Who else could we list on that one? <laughs> There's quite a few people in there. So another key third down here for the Longhorns. They've been fairly successful tonight on third down. This one third and short, very manageable. See what they elect to do here. I wouldn't be surprised if they go in the air on this one, but I'd like to see them get this with, a, in, with their running game, establish some of that running dominance. Line takes the snap up the middle to Christensen once again, but he's met by the line. Oh, it's going to be close. And it's going to be really close. It looks like they're putting it about the 34. See where they spot it. Just shy. Right at the 35. It'll be fourth down in inches. Go for it here. Yeah, I think at this point they're going to have to go for it. Six and a half left in the third quarter. Now they got time. I. I don't know, they need three scores. I three scores, how well, they're struggling. They're moving the ball good. I would I would think they'd go for it. Just need an inch. One inch for the first down here. And he sneaks it across the 35. Klein gets it about three yards. We saw Klein do that in the first quarter. Picks up a Mountain Mobile Auto Glass first down once again for the Longhorns. Not surprised to see him do that again. They, they, he did it on third and short in the first quarter. And they go to it again here on fourth and inches. He started to get stalled a little bit behind his lineman, and then things opened up. Blue Ridge defense did not pursue it fast enough to, to stop that from happening. But Payson doing a good job on this drive, flying in the shotgun. Just about bobbles it, throws it to Flores, who's hit, immediately missed the ball, and it's almost hit hard quick by infield. That could be a glass-shattering hit of the game by infield. The Deemer's glass, glass-shattering hit of the game. Almost picked off by Damon Mitchell. And that yeah, time, just uh, they hung him out to hung him out to dry. Too bad he didn't hang on to that one, though. That was a nice looking pass by Klein, but the receiver unable to hang on to it because of Kise. Or excuse me, Infield. Infield makes a good, quick play on that one. Klein back in shotgun, hands off to Christensen right up the middle, who makes a good charge forward. Brought down by the shoestrings by Hoffmeyer. After gain of five. Hoffman oh, doing a good job of hanging on to him. This Christensen kid is an impressive running back here for the Longhorns. Just a freshman. And uh, stepping up here for the pace in Longhorns. He's had a nice night. Yeah, he's a freshman. What is he, 6'1", I believe? He's five, oh, he's 5'10". Five, 5'10", ten. Five, ten, but looks a lot bigger when he's running through that line. Back up, back up, Klein back up. once again in shotgun. Fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right. He's got McCarthy out there for the pass, but he, Damon Mitchell picks it off and runs it back to about the Longhorns 48, 47 yard line. That looked like a broken up play. He threw it to where the, the receiver was cutting and then the receiver cut back outside. Or it was 18, maybe didn't come back. I don't know, that was just a, Miscommunication, it looked like, by the receivers and the quarterback. But it's a turnover. Interception by Blue Ridge. Nice job by Mitchell, just playing center field out there. Steps in front of it. B.J. London under center. He hands off to Esparza, who goes just to the right side and is met by everybody on the field. Jojo Ortiz leading that. But not after, not till after a gain of five yards. So it'll be second and five from the 43-yard line. Sparza's had some hard-fought runs here tonight. 5'8", 155-pound senior. Been the workhorse for the Yellow Jackets all season long. He's over 200 carries now. Cody Infield split out to the left side. P.J. London under center. He hands it off up the middle to Damon Mitchell. Gets hit, 
He's held on, but he keeps hopping forward. Porter Flake brings him down. He's just shy of a first down at the 39-yard line. Bringing up third and one. Well, the Yellow Jackets, as we mentioned, taking care of business here tonight. They were trying to get, uh, they are hoping Snowflake would have more troubles with uh, Wenzel than they're having. Right now, uh, Snowflake a little sluggish against the Bulldogs, up 14-0 at half, but. Hoffmeyer gets the handoff up the middle. If enough for the first down, Porter Flake brings him down after a gain of about three, bringing it to the 36-yard line. Lobo's likely to. Um, for a Mount Mobile Auto Glass first down. Yeah, Lobo's, you know, to only not to score until the second quarter. Winslow has been struggling this year a lot. And uh, I expected Snowflake to really do some damage there tonight. But maybe they kinda, came out a little Yeah, kind of hard to get flat. your team uh, prepared for that game. It's, a, it's one of those games that has the ten tendency to be a trap game. Hand off to Damon Mitchell up the middle. He's got some a little bit of room. He gets to the secondary before he's brought down by... Looks like number 50. If there's one thing we've learned about the Lobos, though, is that once they finally get started, they typically handle handle their business. They're able to uh, put teams away. They're usually a better second-half team than a first-half team. Yeah, they'll, they'll probably get the momentum going against Winslow. We'll have to see if we can find another update on that and see how they're doing. Like we mentioned before, that game had some repercussions on Blue Ridge's chances of getting a region championship tonight. So with P.J. London in shotgun formation, two receivers out to his right-hand side. He throws a quick pass to Kise, who's open and gets clear up to the, looks like they're gonna mark him down at the 16-yard line for another Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down for Blue Ridge. I'll tell you, the Yellow Jackets done a good job of, of creating weapons. These guys, Zeke Kise and uh, Corey Enfield, Dominique Hoffmeyer, these are all kids that have uh, over the last couple of years developed into top-notch receivers, and we've, uh, we've seen P.J. London really expand his game over the last two years. Quick handoff right up the middle to Hoffmeyer is met immediately by quite a few of the Longhorns. Number 65 once again, uh, Mansoor, as well as Devin Gladden on that tackle for Payson. About two yard gain, looking at second and eight for the Jackets. PJ London's in shotgun formation, two backs in the backfield. And he's gonna pass to McCullough, who dives for it. And there's no penalty on the play, so Jojo Ortiz holding some good coverage on him. Brings it back for third and eight for Blue Ridge. Third and eight, we've got a minute 49 left on the clock for this third quarter. P.J. London's under center, takes the snap and rolls out to his left-hand side. He's looking right in the middle, and it's caught by Wide McCullough open. in for a touchdown for a Hudson's furniture touchdown for Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets, making it 27 to three with 143 left on the clock. We'll look at this replay. You'll see McCullough just does not have anybody on him. Nobody at all. near him. Missed assignment there. So Payson really struggling this second half to pull it together and, and come back in this game. It's interesting because Payson's got a lot of weapons and they've shown they can move the football without their second leading rusher tonight. And then we thought that would affect him more than it really has. And, and perhaps he was somebody that they've missed on defense more than they missed on offense, but. All right, so with 143 left on the clock in the third quarter, Blue Ridge goes up 28 to three. This is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067 and italk1067.com.
Summit Healthcare Regional Medical Center is a proud supporter of high school sports. Many of our local sports players were born at the hospital where Summit Obstetrics offers comfortable individual rooms for mom and baby. In case of a sports injury, the hospital ER is always staffed and prepared to take on the most serious injuries, and Summit features an advanced diagnostics department with state-of-the-art equipment. The Summit Healthcare Orthopedic and Therapy teams can help sports players overcome injuries and return to the game. Summit Healthcare Regional Medical Center wishes all players a successful and healthy season this year. So so you see which way they're going to kick it, right? All right. So go get okay. in front of that. All right. Welcome back to Blue Ridge Stadium. Blue Ridge just scored a touchdown to go up 28-3 to over the Payson Longhorns with 143 left on the clock in the third quarter. Getting ready for another Northland Pioneer College kickoff. That last series started with a, a nice interception by Damon Mitchell. Kickoff by P.J. London, takes a bounce, and Conway struggling to pick that up. Number five, Jacob Kern is about on him when he picks it up. Hoffmeyer gets there, Kern gets there. Jackets are all over Jesse Conway on that return. He only gets it out to about the seven yard line. Been a rough night for the uh, Longhorns, and you can see it on the face of Conway as he makes his way off the field. They've struggled in many of the phases of the game tonight. It just, uh, you know, it just seems like they are just a step behind. They are not that far away from being one of the top teams in the conference. I mean, it's a pass here, a penalty there, uh, just, yeah, and inbounds here. <laughs> Just little things. Flake gets the handoff and is met immediately at the line by the Yellow Jackets. Bezerra meets him and takes him down with loss of one. Looks like they initially, I said it was at the seven yard line. I guess they gave him forward progress, marked it at the 10. So now we're at the nine yard line for second and 11 for the Longhorns. Yeah, you see the receivers from Payson kind of walking out to their routes, to their positions, uh, heads down. Klein takes the snap, hands it off to Christensen up the middle, who is tripped up immediately, but he reaches for a few yards. Austin Slaughter brings him down. Well, gut check time for the Longhorns. This is, they, I mean, they are not out of contention even down by 28, uh, uh, well, by uh, 25 points here. They've got time left. They just got to stay focused and clean up some of their mistakes. Yeah, see, they're walking around a little flat, but they do have uh, something left in them. Klein goes back to pass. Down deep, it's another interception by Kisei at the 25-yard line. He's got room, he dodges a couple tacklers, and he's in, he dives in for a touchdown. Hudson's furniture touchdown. From the 25-yard line, I believe, is where he caught that interception. Takes it the distance. See where he catches this interception. Just overthrown. 29. About the 29-yard 29 29 line. That is a dagger. McCollum makes a good block there on Klein, and Kisei starts to get wrapped up and just dives in. Just Great effort with 14 seconds left just in the third. Just when we talked about Payson still in this game, they let Yellow Jackets hammer and nail into the coffin. That could be it. P.J. London to attempt the point after, makes the kick, and it's another good PAT by London, making it 35-3. to three. Oh, there's a penalty flag. Let's see what we got here, if we're going to go to break or... You know what it's happened? Forced white contact, 52 white. The penalty being forced on the kick. So, I'm not sure I'll say the last name, but 52 Devin Gendry uh, penalty there will be enforced on the kick. This is this is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk 106.7 and, and iTalk1067.com.
All right, we are back at Blue Ridge Stadium. Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets lead the Longhorns 35 to three with 14 seconds left in the third quarter. Kise from Blue Ridge just returned a 29 yard interception for a touchdown. For now we're looking at the next Northern Pioneer, Northland Pioneer College kickoff by London. I don't think the wind's blowing, but he can't get that ball to stand up very well yet. <laughs> It's a fourth quarter thing, maybe. When it comes time to kick off your college education, choose the college with the lowest tuition in Arizona, Northland Pioneer College. Infield's holding the ball for London. He gets a decent kick. It comes down to number seven, Jojo Ortiz, who runs it about, runs about 10 yards. Gets it up to the 23 yard line, 24 yard line. We'll see where they actually spot it when it's said and done. Payson will have the ball. Nine seconds left in the third quarter. We'll see if Payson can turn on their offense. They've got to, they've got to pick themselves up off the ground and keep playing. This you know, could be their last game of the season. And uh, these seniors don't want to go off the field like this. They need to they need to pick their heads up and keep playing. Klein takes the snap, hands off to Christensen up the middle, is met by 50, 57, David Hernandez. For a loss of about two yards on that play. And that's going to end the third quarter. So we'll take a short time out. This is Shola, Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067 and at italk1067.com. Want to buy the number one selling truck in America for over 41 years? Want to buy a vehicle with a lifetime engine warranty? Want to get the best deal in the state of Arizona on your new Ford car, truck, van, or SUV? Go to Sholo Ford. Anyone can say they'll give you a great deal, but Guy Hatchet Sholo Ford means it. In fact, he guarantees it. Buy the best from the best. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce. You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. All right, welcome back to Blue Ridge Stadium where the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets lead the Pace and Longhorns 35 to three. Pace and Longhorns have the ball on the 21 yard line. It's second and about 12. And they've got a lot of work to do to try and get back into this game. Klein takes it from shotgun and runs it, keeps it out to the right side. Oh, Conway, I'm sorry, Conway keeps the ball. He's out at quarterback and he makes about a five yard gain to bring it out to the 26 yard line. Jesse Conway, well, I'm probably the top athlete here for the Pace and Longhorns as he comes into this contest. We, we see where he's getting his rushing yards there with that direct snap. But he has 44 carries, 461 yards and five touchdowns for the Longhorns. He's over. Uh, going to be over a thousand yards in rushing and receiving after tonight's contest. Christensen takes a pitch, bubbles it a little bit, and is met by Esparza, and then finished off by infield after a gain of about four yards. Now yeah, we'll say three yards up to the 30, 31 yard line. I'm sorry, 29 yard line. Makes it fourth and about four to go. The scoring update. Red Mesa is placing, playing Alchese for a region championship. It's tied at 20 to 20 right now down in Alchese. Payson punts the ball from the 20 yard line. Nice punt down to infield. We'll see if he lets how it goes here because the Longhorns are all around it. They're gonna stop it. So they're gonna bring that ball. They're gonna touch the ball at the 30 yard line. Blue Ridge will take over at the 30-yard line with 10 and a half minutes left. 
and we'll see if they keep this momentum going. Another scoring update, Snowflake is leading Winslow now 17 to nothing in the third quarter. With 11 minutes to go Whoa. in the fourth quarter. All right, 11 minutes to go in that game where Snowflake leads 17-0. And if they win that, that will clinch their region championship for the 3A East. If they can hang on for that win, it looks, win, it looks like they will. So London in shotgun formation. Two receivers out to his right. He throws a quick pass to Hoffmeyer, and it's off his shoulder pad, and he misses it. So an incomplete pass brings up second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Once again, looking for pace and to turn on the defense and, and get back into this game, try to show some, some heart to finish out their season. Down by 32, not likely they'll come back in 10 and a half minutes, but they can, they can still finish strong and end their season on a high note here. So quick handoff to a stumbling Chase Esparza. He was about two inches from the ground with his face mask when he got the handoff, I think. Still managed to grab a couple yards there. Bringing up third and eight for the Yellow Jackets. Well, you see why we're so excited to watch Esparza tonight. I mean, he's one of the premier backs in the state. He's not as fast as some of the other backs in the state, but you can just see how durable he is, and his uh, balance and athleticism really makes up for a lot that he lacks. And he doesn't quit. You see him spin off tackles, power over people, and he's not a big guy. He's 155 pounds, but he'll still knock someone over. So timeout by Blue Ridge. We will take a break with that timeout as well. This is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk 106.7 and on italk 1067com When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. All right, welcome back to Blue Ridge Stadium. Boy, some great offense tonight, some great hits. Good things happening tonight. On both sides of the, of the, of the ball for Blue Ridge, Payson started off really good in the first quarter, but has been struggling since, just unable to capitalize. Uh, I think Blue Ridge had, what did you say, Mike? Five, five penalties for 65 yards in the first half. Three of them were 15-yard penalties, and, and Payson just didn't capitalize on those things. Not sure why they came out so flat in the second half, but they haven't been able to produce anything yet this half. P.J. London under center. Fumble on the play. P.J. is able to scoop it back up and save this possession, but that's going to bring up a fourth and eight for Blue Ridge. See if they bring on the punt team. It looks like they may be. All right, so with 9.22 left on the clock, Payson's bringing a whole new team onto the field to receive this punt from P.J. London. With number 18, Jesse Conway back deep to receive. JoJo Ortiz joining him. McCullough down there to meet the runner, whoever gets that ball. Pick it up, hand it to the official. There All right, go. infield grabs that ball, and Pace will take over possession on the 35-yard line after that Blue Ridge punt. Got an update for the Round Valley game. Round Valley's leading Pima 20 to six at this point. 
ending their season on a high note. Klein takes the snap, hands off to Christensen up the middle, who has a lot of room, gets clear to the secondary, crosses the 45-yard line, brings it out to about the 46-yard line before he's brought down for a Mountain Mobile Auto Glass first down. So you see some good attempts there, but McCall or uh, Christensen makes some good gains there. Christensen gets the ball again, is met by Hoffmeyer in, in field and a slew of uh, yellow jackets, but he makes a good gain of about eight yards on that run to make it second and two for the Payson Longhorns. My, mis my mistake, I said Round Valley's ending their season, just ending the regular season. They got they have some promising postseason play ahead of them after this game, so. St. John's currently losing to Morinci, 29 to zero, with 11 minutes to go in their game. So Klein takes the snap, he rolls out to his left. He's got McCarthy out deep, and he jumps and grabs it, brings it down <laughs> at the eight yard line for the Payson Longhorns. What a great catch yes, by McCarthy. Oh man, what a play. I love this, look at McCarthy. Does a great job of getting position. He's much taller than the defender, and he turns and positions himself perfectly to get, come down with that grab. Jacob Kern did not have a chance in that one. Hand off to Christensen right at the middle, who's met behind the line of scrimmage. Did he? Oh, I thought he lost that ball for a second, but he hangs on to it after a short gain, making it sec now second and goal from the eight yard line. Brought down by Austin Slaughter. Yeah, that pass, Kern, did, with his size, he didn't have a chance of intercepting it. He was on him, no cushion, but uh, you can't out-jump McCarthy on that play. Could be the in the running for one of the Beeler Orthodontic straight-line plays of the game. McCarthy grabs another catch in the corner of the end zone for a pace and Longhorn Hudson Furniture touchdown. Great pass by Klein for a nine yard touchdown pass to McCarthy. Well, very fun drive here for the Pace and Longhorns. And you know, this is this is why we said when they were down three touchdowns, four touchdowns, they weren't out of it. But uh, we'll see what they can do now. Back to a four touchdown difference. So Dominguez for this point after attempt, kicks it, yeah. looks good. And that PAT is good with 7.01 left. It's 35 to 10, Blue Ridge. This is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk 106.7 and worldwide on iTalk1067.com. Orthodontist Dr. Joshua Beeler has been providing family-friendly orthodontics in Sholo and the entire White Mountains since 2006. If you need braces, stop in and see the friendly folks at Beeler Orthodontics and meet their professional staff. Dr. Beeler and his team have the latest in orthodontics technology, and they work with each patient individually to custom tailor the most effective treatment plan for the best results. Beeler Orthodontics is a proud sponsor of high school sports. Beeler Orthodontics, live to smile, love your smile. All right, welcome back to Blue Ridge Stadium. We got 7-0-1 left in the fourth quarter here at Blue Ridge, where Blue Ridge is leading 35-10 to in this last regular season game. Payson showing a little bit different lineup here. They may attempt an onside just to try and get the ball back quick. Nope, they break out into a regular formation for, kick, for another Northland Pioneer College kickoff here in the fourth quarter. When it comes time to your college education, choose the college with the lowest tuition in the state of Arizona, Northland Pioneer College. Little pooch kick out to the left where Hoffmeyer's going to dive on it and just in that kickoff right there on the 25-yard line. Well, the Jackets have taken care of business so far tonight against a Pace and Longhorn team who is pretty good. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what what's causing all their 
miscues, but it's, uh, you know, they're not that far away from being one of the top teams in the region. No, you know, they showed in the fourth quarter, or in the first quarter, they've got some, they've got weapons, got a good sized line. They can make things happen. They just let down after that first couple drives. The Sparser takes the drive, or uh, that run, for a, a gain of inches. Not really a gain there, they'll call it second and 10. Nice tackle by Gingery. He's a 5'10", 200 pound senior and just comes off of his blocker, able to make a nice stop. That's exactly what they need here, is get a quick stop, a, a three and out, get the ball back. London takes the snap, pitches it out to Hoffmeyer, who takes a good hit, is wrapped up tight after a short gain of maybe two yards there. Now you're down 25. You need uh, you need a lot, don't you? <laughs> well, you, you know, you need, take you a need three and a half scores here. So, but it all starts with a good defensive series here and a big third down play coming up. London in shotgun, two receivers out to his right. Takes a snap, looks to his right, throws it immediately, is hit. But it makes a, a reception to Hoffmeyer, who gets out to about the 39-yard line, who's tackled out of bounds. Klein meets him at the 39-yard line. You can see P.J. takes a nice hit. And that's a Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down for the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets. Bring it out, they're gonna mark it at the at the 40 yard line. Well, that is not what they wanted right there to give up a first down and let Blue Ridge uh, start to work the clock here. That hit on London could be another runner for the Deemer's glass, glass shattering hit of the game. Handoff up the middle. He's met immediately by the line. Couldn't see who got that handoff. Mitchell, Damon Mitchell gets that handoff. Gain of one on the play, Gendry on another tackle there. Ethan Marbello comes in for, for Hoffmeyer. So second nine from the 41 yard line. Mitchell gets another handoff up the middle. Gets a couple yards on the play, making it third and seven for the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets soccer in action tonight, the semifinals, and the Yellow Jackets playing Chino Valley tonight in a 1-1 tie, and it heading into overtime there, down in the uh, valley, trying to battle it out for a, another shot at a state title the yellow jackets just a a penalty kick away last year from a state title back in the state playoffs london goes back to pass is almost met by mansoor he throws it back across the field to infield who catches it and is brought down by klein at the 30 yard line All great pass by infield night a catch long <laughs> Corey Enfield has been left alone. He's just going to come across the entire defense here. Look at that. Clear back across the other side of the field. 28-yard gain for Blue Ridge. Longhorns in that zone defense and just unable to stay with him as they hand him off to the next defender. He's wide open, and he's been there, been wide open all night long. I'm really impressed with that pass by P.J. London to turn his body and yes. throw clear back across his body, across the field. London takes the snap, handoff to Mitchell up the, out to the right side, who shakes off one and is brought down by Christensen. At the 25 yard line. So Blue Ridge will be second and five from the 25 yard line. Oh, 
So we've got quite a few players we're going to have up for the Beeler Orthodontics. Straight line play of the game. Ooh, a pass almost picked off. Deflect, and McCullough had it off of him, and then... Uh, that was a fast, that was a hard pass by London. You see his... <laughs> I think it got, McCarthy had a shot at it too. Mark, hit it McCarthy in the head. Oh man, right in the numbers of McCullough, bounces off and catches McCarthy right in the face mask. So third and five for Blue Ridge. So we'll be announcing our Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store player of the game here coming up. Mitchell gets another handoff up the middle, but is met by that 280-pound, six-foot-four man sewer. Gets a gain of a few yards, brings it to fourth and one. Fourth and maybe two, actually. So we'll see if Blue Ridge what they're going to do on this one. If they're going to go for it, looks like they are. They're going to rush up to the ball in that score formation. Payson brings up their defense tight. They hand off right up the middle. They get a good gain by, by Chase Esparza. Number 50, we don't have a, a name for him on our roster for Payson, but he spins Chase Esparza down at the nine yard line. That's another Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down for Blue Ridge, making it first and goal from the nine yard line. Two minutes left in the game for Blue Ridge, and they're knocking on the door. Well, we uh, we announcing our Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store player of the game here coming up in just a moment. Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store, best selection of hiking, hunting, camping, and fishing gear. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Man. Blue Mitchell. Ridge just inches. Damon Mitchell inches from getting in the end zone again. Blue Ridge makes a gain of eight on that run, making it second and goal. They rush up to the line once again. A quick snap handed off to Chase Esparza, who trips over the line for a, they gonna call it? Yep, there's another touchdown for the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets. Chase Esparza rushes in from one yard, bringing the score to 41 for Blue Ridge, 10 for Payson. Nice job by Esparza. <laughs> finds the opening on the outside. It's all stuffed up in the middle, just bounces it to the outside and falls in for the score. P.J. London back for the point after attempt. And that kick just barely clears the uprights, bringing it 42 to 10 for Blue Ridge with 113 left in the fourth quarter. This is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk 1067 and iTalk1067.com. Want to buy the number one selling truck in America for over 41 years? Want to buy a vehicle with a lifetime engine warranty? Want to get the best deal in the state of Arizona on your new Ford car, truck, van, or SUV? Go to Sholo Ford. Anyone can say they'll give you a great deal, but Guy Hatchet Sholo Ford means it. In fact, he guarantees it. Buy the best from the best. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce. All right, we're back at Blue Ridge Stadium where Blue Ridge is about to close out this game. A minute 13 left on the clock. Up over Payson, 42 to 10. Payson started to show a glimmer of hope there beginning of the fourth quarter, but has since fallen apart. A few interceptions, a couple interceptions. Uh, just some slow play on defense, not like we saw that there in the first quarter. Yeah, they were really they were really moving in that first quarter. They had uh, two possessions. They controlled the clock for almost well, almost the entire first quarter and much of the second quarter, but uh, just haven't had the success that they had in those first couple of quarters since then. So Payson doing a little reverse on the kickoff return, but it he bobbles it and drops it. Conway's got the ball now, and he's brought down. That ball started off with uh, number seven from Payson, Jojo Ortiz. 
Reese Esparza made that tackle, and there's a flag on the play. Well, it's time now for our Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store player of the game, brought to you by the Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store. And our Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store player of the game is P.J. London. P.J. London has gone 10 of 16, 234 yards, three passing touchdowns, and a rushing touchdown. The first down. And so P.J. London, our Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store player of the game. Best selection of hiking, hunting, camping, and fishing gear. You'll find it out at the Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store south of Pine Top on, the, on Highway 260, right-hand side of the road just before you get to the Honda Resort and Casino. All right, Payson makes a quick pass. Quick pass out to Porter Flake for a gain of about five yards, making a second and five from the 19-yard line. Payson going no huddle. Snap to Klein, another quick pass out to number 10. Oh, well, it, it actually, <laughs> they, had, uh, they had Trevor Flores and Jesse Conway right by each other. It went right over the top of Flores. Hit Conway in the hands and he dropped it. So that pass is incomplete. Third and five for Payson Longhorns. Payson once again in shotgun formation. Quick pass out to Conway. He comes across the middle. He's trying to run into the ref, it looks like. He comes clear across the field before Kern takes him down. Not after, not till after he gets another Mountain Mobile Autoglass first down. Oh, and he stopped the clock with 30 seconds left. Just before, because uh, he gets uh, out of bounds there. Or no, excuse me, gets a first down. Oh, Payson takes the snap, but then it fumbles it. Throws a quick pass out to uh, number seven, Jojo Ortiz. Oh, no, that was number 10, Flores. He gets hit really hard there on the sidelines. Yeah, that's uh, Reese Esparza coming up from his cornerback position. And he has he's on a dead sprint. Flores kind of bobbles the ball here. Trying to get turned around and stay in bounds, and Esparza just buries him. That one in the running for our B. The Orthodontic straight line play of the game, and our or excuse me, our Deemer's glass glass shattering hit of the game. But we'll go now to our B. The Orthodontic straight line play of the game, brought to you by Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile, love your smile, Beeler Orthodontics, and uh, key that up right now and take a look at it here. Here's our Beeler Orthodontic straight line play of the game. P.J. London. Taking a hard rush right there. Not much blocking from the line, and it wasn't even a screen. He throws it deep. First half pass deep there. To McCullough. That one to McCullough. That's our Beeler Orthodontic straight line play of the game, brought to you by... Beeler Orthodontics, live the smile, love your smile. Beeler Orthodontics. And we also want to take, uh, take a moment now to go to uh, our Deemer's Glass, glass shutter and hit of the game, brought to you by Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass. For Blue quality Ridge. glass at affordable prices, call 1-888-GLASSMAN. That's Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. And we'll look at that now. You can see here it was a pass in the first half and intended for Flores. And uh, just a big hit. Corey Enfield coming across and knocking the ball loose there. That's our Deemer's glass, glass shattering hit of the game. Call 1 888 Glassman. That's 1 888 Glassman, Deemer's glass in Lakeside. So Blue Ridge finishes their regular season with a win over Payson, 42 to 10, bringing their record to six and four on the season, three, four and one in region play. And uh, most likely, we don't know the final score on Snowflake at this point, but uh, most likely they finish the season 
their regular season with a win over Winslow to take the region championship. Well, well Chris has given them the win already. There it is. So I, I don't know what inside information Chris has, but uh, you know Chris Bennett is uh, always on it, and if I think he's clairvoyant a little bit, so because he, he clearly knows what the uh, outcome of that game is right there. And you can see Sholo tonight. They were supposed to play Holbrook. And Holbrook was unable to field the team. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Chris changed it. Chris changed it to three and zero. <laughs> <laughs> he took back his. He took it back. <laughs> he's. I guess he's not clairvoyant. <laughs> Never mind. Twenty-four zero. That is the final. They they did win. See, Chris was right. Chris was right, and he he uh, doubted himself and pulled it off the board. Maybe his. Eyes were still watering from having his nose hairs waxed. I heard something about that. Oh, uh, that was not a good day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. <laughs> so Blue Ridge wins 42 to 10 tonight to end the regular season. Great play by Blue Ridge, a little slow start. Uh, in the beginning of the game, Pace had shown that they had some hope for this, but uh, things changed quickly, and Blue Ridge comes off with the win. We'll be back in just a moment as we wrap things up here from Blue Ridge High School. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on ITOC 106.7 and worldwide on ITOC1067.com. Want to buy the number one selling truck in America for over 41 years? Want to buy a vehicle with a lifetime engine warranty? Want to get the best deal in the state of Arizona on your new Ford car, truck, van, or SUV? Go to Sholo Ford. Anyone can say they'll give you a great deal, but Guy Hatch at Sholo Ford means it. In fact, he guarantees it. Buy the best from the best. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce. Hudson's Furniture has quality furniture at affordable prices. With their newly expanded showroom, they offer furniture for every room in your home, including best home furnishings, featuring solid wood construction and a lifetime warranty. And customized orders are available to fit your individual size, color, and style. Plus, get guaranteed credit approval with zero interest and zero down. For the best prices on quality furniture, visit Hudson's Furniture across from Walmart in Taylor. In today's challenging economy, having a college education is a must. Northland Pioneer College is here to help you prepare for your future. NPC is committed to providing you with the highest quality education with the lowest tuition cost in the state. We offer a variety of advanced learning classes to prepare you for a transfer or associate's degree, personal interest education, or earning your GED. Contact an academic advisor for more information. Go online at npc.edu. Need hats, shirts, or jackets embroidered with your logo? Get custom embroidered products from Little Bluebird Studios. That's right, the company that does the best job screen printing t-shirts and hoodies now offers embroidery. Little Bluebird Studios is a local company with skilled designers that care about your company's image and brand. Call Little Bluebird Studios today, 928-351-7942 or online at littlebluebird.org. Little Bluebird Studios, the company that cares. Summit Healthcare Regional Medical Center is a proud supporter of high school sports. Many of our local sports players were born at the hospital, where Summit Obstetrics offers comfortable individual rooms for mom and baby. In case of a sports injury, the hospital ER is always staffed and prepared to take on the most serious injuries, and Summit features an advanced diagnostics department with state-of-the-art equipment. The Summit Healthcare Orthopedic and Therapy teams can help sports players overcome injuries and return to the game. Summit Healthcare Regional Medical Center wishes all players a successful and healthy season this year.
You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world-famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Well, we welcome you back to Blue Ridge High School. Final score, 42 to 10. The Yellow Jackets take care of business tonight against the Pace and Longhorns. As we get some other scores for you, an interesting game being played out at Red Mesa High School tonight for the 2A uh, championship, and it's 28 to 20. I'll just say Falcons retaking the lead in that one, and that one late in the contest. Do we know how late, Steve? Well, fourth quarter, about a minute to go. So this should be over by now. We haven't got the final update, but yeah. Falcons could be that North uh, that North Region uh, 2A region champion. I believe it's called, well, I can't remember the name of that. The little Colorado region. Little Colorado region, that's right. That's exactly right. So I'll just say, what a year for them. One of the losses on this Yellow Jacket uh, season was to the I'll just say Falcons. And you get a chance to see just how good the Falcons are as they've been able to be successful in coming away, uh, hopefully, with the region championship here tonight. We'll await the final score before we call that one. But uh, Snowflake presumably taking care of business uh, at Winslow tonight. Uh, Lobos 24 to nothing with five minutes left in the game in that one. Is, or do we have a final on it? That's a final. Okay, so final uh, 24 to nothing. Snowflake will be our 3A East region champions. And so hats off to the Snowflake Lobos who will head into state. They're the number two ranked team right now and uh, presumably will stay there uh, and end up being in the bottom bracket. And it sounded like they've missed out on some points because they weren't able to play Holbrook as well. Yeah, so here's an update, updated board for you for the 3A East region standings. Snowflake 4-0 after their win tonight. Blue Ridge goes to 4-1. And uh, with the head-to-head -head competition, even though each team has four wins, the Yellow Jackets with the loss to Snowflake will finish second in the region. Snowflake takes home the 3A East region standing. We don't have, I don't know if that's, uh, is that an update there for Sholo? No, that's not updated. So uh, well, Sholo didn't get to play Holbrook tonight. So so they don't, well, then that is, that two. is. There, so they are 2-2 two and two because Holbrook canceled on them. And uh, you'll remember Snowflake, uh, that's why Snowflake was in the predicament that they were in tonight, had a must-win situation to secure the region championship tonight against Winslow because earlier in the season, about three weeks ago, Holbrook canceled on them. And so um, that uh, forcing them to get the win tonight to secure the region championship, which they do handily over the Winslow Bulldogs. Pace and falling to one and three, or no, they should be one and four. Yeah, on the be season. One for Payson. So uh, we'll we'll update that graphic for you later. Anyway, let's take a look at the um, at the state championship here next Friday. Games will be here's the interesting change. Games will be played on Friday for the first two rounds. The opening two rounds will be on Fridays, which is a, a change from year, previous years where they typically play on Saturdays. All playoff games have been played on Saturday, Steve. And, uh, that uh, is certainly going to change things up for families trying to travel to various locations and also for us as we start thinking about who we're going to cover next week. But you look at uh, at the games, we'll all be at high seed next week. Uh, top 16 teams for the region will go. The top seven teams in our region get an automatic bid. And so if you win that conference championship, that's what you get is that automatic bid, plus you get a home game. And uh, you know, those, that's pretty valuable for that opening round. And that's going to fare well for quite a few teams. And uh, we don't know for sure what the final standing is going to be for Blue Ridge yet, if they're going to have a home game or not. They were kind of on the bubble for that. Uh, but it, it, initially it looked like they were probably going to be away. Uh, for next week, we'll see what happens there. Snowflake will be at home. Uh, who else? Round Valley. Round Valley should have a home game as well. Yeah, and Being I think up here on the mountain. I think I I don't see the win over this this win over Pace and Pace is so low in the in the rankings. They're sitting 20 with a minus three uh, rating, and so they I don't see them moving up too much here. So I think they're going to hang on to that 11 spot, and uh, 
of course, barring anything else uh, happening throughout the region. Let's go downstairs and check in with Ron Everingham. Ron? P.J., great game, man. Uh, here with Southmore quarterback P.J. London. Uh, talk a little bit about what you like, what your team's doing, heading into the playoffs right now. Uh, you guys really seem to be gelling well. Uh, what are some things that you like that you saw tonight? Um, I liked how hard we played. Uh, I, like, uh, I liked how the line blocked so hard for me, and everyone was just playing hard. So. Your game seems to really be coming alive. I mean, the accuracy, you passed for unofficially for 235 yards, uh, three touchdowns and a rushing touchdown, um, our player of the game. So congratulations for that. Um, what what are some things that you like about yourself about, that you're doing um, here in your second year, finishing up your second season? Um, I like that my uh, completion uh, percentage is getting better. And uh, with the great receivers I have, they always catch for me. But it, they drop them, and I still go back to them. I still trust them. But... Um, that's it, pretty much. So going into the playoffs, the last question, I'll get you out with this one. Um, la last question, uh, going into the playoffs, what are some things that you, you know, that you got, you think you guys need to really be working on um, to continue to get better, um, to really compete and make a run into the playoffs? Um, we just gotta play every uh, down like it's our last. That's all. We just gotta do perf be per perfection. So. That's it. Okay. Congratulations, man. Yep. Good luck in the playoffs. Back up to you guys. All right, thanks, Ron. Nothing hard about that. Be perfection, right? Hey, you know, nothing hard. <laughs> it's that's a high, a tall order, but that's but that is what that is what Coach London expects, and he would expect nothing more out of PJ. Uh, I mean, you ask it, what what do we what do we need to do? We've got to be perfect. We've got to be perfect. They don't have the luxury of the depth of athletes that other teams have, and so in order for them to be successful, they have to play perfect. They have to play perfect. Do they have to? be perfect you know look talking about being perfect they're going to make mistakes not everyone's going to play every down 100 percent but they've got to play as a team every play and if if anybody lets down you're, you'll notice it it's going to be a, a, a quick notice because everything has to function properly the way blue ridge plays everyone knows even the pace and coach mentioned at halftime that they're they're running the handful of plays that we know they'll play yeah it's, there's no surprises here. Blue Ridge does what they do. They have their handful Which of plays. Which makes it all the more surprising that, that uh, <laughs> they were able to get so many wide receivers tonight. I That's mean, it right. was an they, outstanding night for, for those receivers. They perfect that handful of plays, and it's just bread and butter. They go out and do it over and over and over, and people know what they're running. Other teams know what they're going to do. They just can't stop it very easy. Well, that's going to wrap things up for us. We want to thank our sideline reporter tonight, Ron Everingham, on spotter. Our spotters and statisticians tonight were Mike Caldwell and Angie Caldwell. Effects Mike uh, is Isaac Hobbs and uh, Dylan Smith. And uh, audio photography, Blake Murchison. Our technical director, Talicia Stone Street. The juicy graphics tonight were Chris Bennett. We thank him. <laughs> Replay, uh, Michael Collins. Our camera operators were Janessa Moore, Jimmy Maxwell, and Zoe Paxson. And our in-studio producer tonight, Ashley Harley. Did we miss our – did we miss something? What did we miss? Oh, okay. We, uh, so we also say special thanks to our advertisers tonight. Uh, we want to thank Ace Hardware and Pine Top Sholo and Heber Art Overgard, Sunrise Park Resort, Northland Pioneer College, Summit Regional Medical Center, Beela Orthodontics, Deemers Glass, the Indian Pine Restaurant out at Honda, Octopus Car Wash, Subway, Hudson's Furniture, and of course, Show Low Ford on the east end of the Deuce, the best place to buy your next car, truck, van, or SUV is out at Show Low Ford. Go down and say hello to Guy Hatch. He is the guy that's going to get you the lowest deal on your next Ford, car, truck, van, or SUV in the state of Arizona. That's right. doesn't matter. You could go down to Phoenix. You could go down to Tucson. It does not matter. He guarantees the lowest price in the state of Arizona on your next car, truck, van, or SUV. That will wrap things up for us. Uh, for Well, we invite you back next week. We'll have, have uh, some one of the uh, playoff games happening next Friday here on ITALK 106.7 and ITALK1067.com. Until then, uh, for Steve Owens, I'm Camden Smith saying so long, everybody. Want to buy the number one selling truck in America for over 41 years? Want to buy a vehicle with a lifetime engine warranty? Want to get the best deal in the state of Arizona on your new Ford car, truck, van, or SUV? Go to Sholo Ford. Anyone can say they'll give you a great deal, but Guy Hatchet Sholo Ford means it. In fact, he guarantees it. Buy the best from the best. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce.
When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1 888 Glassman. This has been an iTalk 1067 Sports Exclusive, presented by Sholo Ford. High School Football is also brought to you in part by Northland Pioneer College, Ace Hardware of the White Mountains, Little Bluebird Studios, Sunrise Park Resort, Honda Outdoor Ski and Sports Store, Deemer's Glass, Beeler Orthodontics, Summit Regional Medical Center, Octopus Car Wash, Hudson's Furniture, and... Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. This is a copyrighted broadcast. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or reuse of this program without the express written consent of ITOC 1067 and Country Mountain Airwaves is expressly prohibited. For more information about this game and others around the region, go to ITOC1067.com.